what's up guys welcome to part two of the calculator series in this video we're going to wrap things up let's go ahead and open up our calculator file and let's pick up where we left off you're under the equal button let's place everything that we created in the last video on our window and we're going to start off with our entry box we called it the expression field and we're going to use the grid method to place it on the window the grid method takes two parameters row and column so you have to tell it exactly where you want this entry box to be located at. And let me show you an example of a grid that I created for this project. So this is the grid. It has columns, it has rows. The columns go down vertically and they start at zero. So this is column zero, column one, column two, and column three. Rows also start at zero. So this is row zero, row one, two, three, four, five. Let me pull up my calculator picture. So if we wanted a place this entry box on our grid, we would want it to be right at the top. So it would be in row zero, column zero. Now for button number one, it's gonna be one row down. So it's gonna be in row one, column zero. Button number two, it's gonna be in row one, column one. Button three, row one, column two. And the addition button is gonna be in row one, column three. For button number four, it's gonna be right underneath button number one, so it's gonna be one row down, row two, column zero, button number five, row two, column one, button six, row two, column two, subtraction button, row two, column three. Now for button number seven, it's gonna be below button number four, so it's gonna be in row three, column zero, and I think you guys get the idea. So that's how the grid works, very, very simple. So let's use this as a template for our project. So let's go back to our project i'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can have this as a reference over here so we know now that this is going to be in row zero column zero okay so now we're going to create our button and this is in row one column zero button two is in row one, column one. Button three is in row one, column two. And then we got the addition button. Row one, column three. All right, and let's test this out, make sure everything's working correctly. And there's the entry box and here are the buttons. But the reason that it looks like this is because the entry box and button number one are on the same column, but obviously this is a lot wider. So this button over here, which is in a different column, can't show up until this one is done displaying. To fix this, we have to add one more parameter to the grid over here for expression field. And that's gonna be something called column span. So we want it to span a total of four columns because we have four buttons. So if we run this now, it's going to display it like this. All right, now let's add our button number four. And let me minimize this. So this is in row two, column zero. Button five, row two, column one. Button number six, row two, column two. And we got the subtract button. Row two, column three. And then we got button number seven, row three, column zero. Button eight, row three, column one. Button nine, row three, column 
two. And then we got multiply. Row three, column three. And then we got button number zero. Row four, column zero. Now we got the decimal button. This is in row four, column one. We got the clear button. Row four, column two. We got the division button. And this one's in row four, column three. And we also got the equal button. This one's in row five, column zero. And this one's also by itself, just like the entry box. So this one's also gonna need a column span. And let's run this. All right, there are the buttons. Now for the entry box, I want it to match the width of the buttons. So we're gonna make it a little bit wider and we're also gonna make it a little bit taller. We could make this bigger now. So for that, we're gonna go in here in the grid and we're gonna add a iPad X. This is gonna make it wider. Let's set that to eight. And let's also make it a little bit taller. For this, we're gonna use iPad -y, and let's give it a value of 25. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that looks better. Now let's also create some separation between the title bar and the entry box, and also between the entry box and the buttons. For this, we're gonna use something called Patty, and we're gonna set it equal to 15. And Patty creates separation on both sides, so it created separation on the top and the bottom. All right, I think that looks good. Let's work on our functions now. So let's scroll all the way back up and let's get started here with this press function. This is the function that's being called when the user clicks on a button. So if they click on button number one, for example, we're sending over a one and we're gonna grab that one with this argument num. And we're gonna store this num in another variable called expression. Let's create it up here. And we're gonna set this to an empty string. Let's bring it in here with the global keyword and let's update this expression every time the user clicks on a button. So if the user clicks on button number one, it's gonna come through here and we're gonna set expression to a one. If they click on the plus symbol, we're going to add that plus symbol to the expression. So the expression is now gonna have one plus. If the user clicks on button number three, we're gonna add that three. So this expression is gonna have one plus three. Let me show you what that looks like. So every time we click on a button, our expression variable is being updated. So currently it has two plus three but we want this to show up over here. So we're gonna set the text variable associated with this entry box equal to this expression. And remember we called it equation. We created it right here. So let's set that equal to this expression. Let's try it again. And now it's showing up over here. All right, that's gonna be it for the press function. Now we're gonna complete this equal press function. So we're actually gonna switch spots here. For this one, we're also gonna bring in this expression and we're gonna solve the expression. We're gonna do this using a built-in function eval. And we're gonna set this eval equal to expression. So it's gonna solve it and it's gonna return it in string format into this total 
variable. Now we're going to set our equation text variable equal to this total. So it's going to go from showing the expression, but when the user clicks on the equal button, which is calling on this equal press function, it's going to solve the expression and it's going to return the total and it's going to show it on the entry box. So let's run this. So as soon as I click on this button, it's going to call on the equal press function. It's going to return the total and it's going to show it on the screen. But if I click on another button at this point, the old expression is still showing up. And that's because we didn't reset our expression variable. So let's do that here. So we're going to set expression to uh, empty string. And now when we run this again, click on equals. And if we want to solve another problem, now the old expression doesn't show up. All right, now this works fine, except if the user's trying to do things like divide by zero. In that case, it's gonna give us an error. So we have to include this in a try and accept. In that case, we want our equation text variable to display error. And we also want to set our expression to an empty string. So let's run this. So let's divide by zero. And it says error. All right, the only function we have left is this clear function. This is just gonna clear the contents. So let's bring in our expression and we're gonna set this expression equal to an empty string. And we're also gonna set our equation text variable to a zero. That way when the user clicks on that button, the entry box displays a zero. And that should be it, let's run it again. All right, let's make sure it's working correctly. So let's enter some random numbers in here subtract that's correct let's multiply all right and let's do a division problem all right that's correct too one final one let's do some decimal work and that's working correct as well and that's going to be it I appreciate you guys watching the calculator series and I'll see you guys in the next one.